Hey physics, this is Horner, and uh, this is 1998B6. This is the worked out solution, and the first one here says you have a heavy ball swinging back and forth with negligible air resistance. Point P is the lowest point, and Q is one of the two highest points, so the other high point would be here. On the following diagrams, they want you to draw and label all the vectors that could represent the velocity and acceleration of the ball, of the ball as at, point, at points P and Q. If a vector is zero, explicitly state this fact. The dashed lines indicate the horizontal and vertical directions. So for the very first one at point P, we see that it's at the very bottom. And so what we're going to do is we know that the velocity has got to be tangent to the circle. So we know it's going in this direction. So this would be the velocity. The acceleration points straight towards the middle of the circle or where the pendulum is, is swinging from. So this has got to be the acceleration. For point Q, um, we're going to do the same type of thing. So what we've got to do with it is um, we know that the, uh, the velocity of this thing is actually zero. So our velocity is equal to zero meters per second. And it did say if, if a vector is zero, explicitly state this fact. So explicitly stating it is just showing it right here. Um, the acceleration is going not to be in the center, so it's not going to point here anymore. It doesn't also point straight down either because it's actually getting pulled in this direction. So your acceleration would be coming down and to the left at that point. Um, it's a combination of the one that's going straight down. So let's draw this. So we have one going straight down and we have the uh, tension going this way. So if we make our parallelogram, you'll notice that the acceleration is right here. Uh, and that's how you can tell where the acceleration is on this one. So um, for some people, that's a little bit confusing, but uh, really shouldn't be too awfully bad for us. All right, so that is actually worth uh, four points altogether. You get one point for this you get one point for this, one point for this, and then finally one point for the other one. And uh, that's kind of what you'll see for it. Uh, for the next part, it says after several swings, the string does break. The mass of the string and air resistance are negligible. Uh, on the following diagram, sketch the path of the ball if the break occurs when the ball is at point P or point Q. In each case, briefly describe the motion of the ball after the break. So it's if it's at point P, if we go back up to what we were looking at, so we're going to go back up here at point P, we know that the ball is going in this direction. And so what we will do is we will draw the ball going off in this direction. So it will travel tangent. Um, and uh, so it starts off tangent and then the ball will start to fall. So it will do like this. So it'll actually make a parabolic path. So it's kind of like a projectile. Uh, in this one, the ball has stopped. And because it stopped, if the ball is then released, it will fall straight down. In this case, left to right, the velocity in the x direction is constant. So that's really important to show. And the velocity in the y direction will increase, okay, but it will increase downward. For this next one, there is uh, no, ex no velocity in the x at all. And the vy, you're going to have the same thing. It will increase as it goes down. And that is the, uh, the end of this problem, nice and short. So that's really all we needed.